Oh, wait, no. How do I turn it around? Rotate your phone. How can I, sorry, how can I turn the screen around so that it's like facing the other way, do you know? Oh, wait. Okay, there you go. Hold on, I'm just going to check that this. Okay. So I would um, firstly just like to begin uh, again by explaining sort of the, um, giving a brief <coughs> um, introduction into where these um, teachings came from. Um, <coughs> they were both, uh, <coughs> these were both initially delivered at the um, AWL's summer camp over the summer in, uh, up in Yorkshire Deals, um, with which you know, several Atlas members, including myself, um, Don Ephraim, um, attended. Um, <coughs> you know, the, they invited us to give these two presentations. Um, <coughs> So they were both given uh, at the AWL summer camp. Um, they were both specifically chosen um, as, <coughs> you know, to particularly sort of engage the AWL um, in particular. Um, What's the AWL? Sorry? What's the AWL? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's the Alliance for Workers' Liberty. Um, <coughs> Um, right, and, um, you know, I mean, I saw sort of the, um, <coughs> one of the things sort of to bear in mind is that, um, you know, <coughs> you know, this sort of, um, intervention by Platypus at the AWL summer camp, um, is a sort of, um, an example of sort of, um, the sort of broader, um, Type of um, activity that Platypus does. Um, you know, we, we don't simply hold reading groups um, or organize coffee breaks on campus. Um, <coughs> you know, we also host you know, panel events. Um, and we've published the Platypus Review, which um, I see you pick up copy of uh, the copy of up um, here this evening. Um, <coughs> it's issue one eleven. <coughs> but we, we also, um, a, a key part of what Platypus does is to um, you know, engage with the, you know, 
deadlift. Um, so that this sort of um, intervention was sort of uh, in, in, in this sort of latter category. Um, <coughs> I suppose the important thing to bear in mind then is, um, you know, why we sort of like engage <coughs> in this way. Um, you know, it's why we sort of go to um, you know, experience like the symptoms, like on the left, as we say. Um, you know, <coughs> it's very important. Um, you know, is that um, <coughs> we say in our Um, in the opening to our uh, statement, of, statement of purpose, um, that Platypus is, is a project for the <coughs> self-criticism, self-education, and ultimately the <coughs> reconstitution of a Marxian left. <coughs> so, um, you know, it's important that we sort of You know, we um, obviously our sort of um, <coughs> perspective on, on history is, is mediated by the left, um, and it's important for us to engage with the symptoms of the left as they manifest. Um, <coughs> um, also, but you know, um, to serve uh, um, self-critical and self-educative. Um, <coughs> so these two sort of topics, i.e. of Trotskyism and class consciousness, were chosen specifically with um, the AWL in mind. Um, the AWL are a, a Trotskyist group, albeit of a slightly eclectic sort, um, self-described, um, in a sense, um, <coughs> which sort of Obviously, um, necessity that you know the presentation that I am going to give um, this evening. Um, I, I would add that uh, this presentation was given first um, at the AWL's uh, summer camp, and the one on class consciousness um, was given later. Um, we have like reversed the order uh, this time. Um, uh, for several reasons. Um, one is, I think, the class consciousness uh, teaching um, conveniently sort of um, mapped up in a more of a concretely to where we are in the reading group at the moment. Um, <coughs> uh, whereas the presentation I'm about to give sort of, um, you know, draws on readings that we do. Um, Next term, um, by Trotsky. Um, uh, I should also say um, <coughs> um, that you know uh, the syllabus that Platypus you know works with in the reading group is um, drawn from the left, um, more particularly perhaps from like the new left, um, <coughs> which is why you know for example we have um, you know the text I will be referring to. Day, you know, um, Trotsky's Lessons of October, um, Stalinism and Bolshevism, and so on, um, are the sort of canonical like texts of the left, which we read in order to um, educate ourselves as to the sort of um, history that the left is itself drawing on. Um, <coughs> excuse me, um, but I would just add that in. You know that, in one sense, um, uh, in sort of uh, preparing for this week, I realized, in a sense, that um, there was a certain amount taken for granted, perhaps in my presentation, um, in that uh, presupposes a certain, um, really, that it, you know, it deals with um, texts and issues which we will address in much greater depth uh, next term. So it is, in some sense, an 
advertisement for the reading group uh, next year, um, which I would encourage you all to attend. Um, <coughs> um, yes. Uh, I think that was all I wanted to say. Um, so I shall. <coughs> In there with the presentation, which should take maybe 15 minutes, and then we'll move on to uh, questions and answers. Um, so, <coughs> <coughs> Platypus is often misrecognized by the left in a, in a number of different ways. One of the most common and interesting misrecognitions of, of Platypus is that we are Trotskyists. Indeed, two of our founding members had been members of the Spartacist League's youth section in America, but Platypus is in no way a Trotskyist organization. We, we are not a political party and do not have lines or positions as such. We are an educational project in investigating what we call the death of the left in, in the hopes of producing <coughs> the conditions for a new emancipatory politics in the present. However, we do take Trotsky and Trotskyism very seriously. Trotsky represented the best of the tradition of historical Marxism. In our reading group, we read a number of texts by Trotsky, some of which I will refer to in this presentation, <coughs> as well as some by Trotskyists, <coughs> those who sought to retain the critical consciousness of Trotskyism, to swim against the current, as Trotsky put it. In Platypus, we refer to Lenin, Luxembourg, and Trotsky as second international radicals. To understand Trotsky properly, therefore, we must first return to Trotsky's origins as a Marxist in the second international. <coughs> we can explore what this means from Trotsky's involvement in the 1905 revolution, in which he played a central role. In 1906, that, I, that's the uh, first 1905 revolution in Russia, in 1906, he wrote one of his most well-known pamphlets, Results and Prospects, reflecting on the experience of 1905. There are several key points I want to mention in relation to this text. First, the text itself presents the need, <coughs> the need that Trotsky saw, and which is commented on elsewhere by Lenin and Luxembourg, to learn from defeats, <coughs> namely to reflect on the apparent failures of the 1905 revolution in order to discover how one might progress in the future. In this pamphlet, Trotsky assesses how the factors that <coughs> seem to lead towards socialism also block it. In this way, he continues to prosecute the revisionist dispute, a continuing theme in the Second International between people such as Edward Bernstein, who contended that socialism gradually grew, grew within capitalism <coughs> due to the ever-increasing socialization of means of production, and those like Lenin and Luxembourg, who insisted that this development was contradictory and that capitalism had to be over overthrown politically namely in the chief lesson of 1848, the dictatorship of the proletariat. <clears throat> in the key chapter of the pamphlet titled 1789-1848-1905, Trotsky insists that the 1905 revolution resembles not so much the great French revolution of 1789, so much as the failed revolutions of 1848. <clears throat> History does not repeat itself. However, <clears throat> I am quoting Trotsky here. Um, History does not repeat itself. However much one may compare the Russian Revolution with the, great French, with the Great French Revolution, the former can never be transformed into a repetition of the latter. The 19th century has not passed in vain. <coughs> in this, he demonstrates the chief insight of Marxism as a critique of the socialist movement, namely that the struggle for socialism cannot be misrecognized as the struggle for democracy or is the struggle against caste, as was the case in the bourgeois revolution in 1789. But rather, it is a new phenomenon contingent on the development of capitalism and the concurrent capitalist state, or Bonapartist state, which Marx <coughs> recognized emerging in the wake of the 1848 revolution. If the Marxist left fell below this critical recognition, then perhaps the 19th century has passed in vain, as, Tr as Trotsky put it. <coughs> Marxism converted socialism into a science but it does not prevent some Marxists from converting Marxism into a utopia. 
There's not much to, to note about Trotsky in the intervening years, <clears throat> up until the revolution of 1917, except that he continued to be a member of the Second International, and in Russia steered <clears throat> an independent line between the Bolshevik Menshevik split. I shall also note, <clears throat> I shall also not address his role in the 1917 revolution, after he joined Lenin and the Bolsheviks, or during the Civil War. Suffice to note that Trotsky, like Lenin and the other Bolsheviks, thought that the Russian Revolution would only be a, a prelude to a greater pan-European and eventually world revolution, particularly hoping that it would spark a revolution in Germany. The first attempt at such a revolution in Germany started in 1918 <coughs> and resulted in the SPD coming to power as a counter-revolutionary force, resulting in the murder of Rosa Lux Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht. <coughs> We, we pick up our story then in 1923-24, with the death of Lenin, the failure of a final attempt at revolution in Germany, and the need for Trotsky to reflect upon the lessons of the October Revolution. The abiding, <coughs> the abiding theme for Trotsky in the 1920s, exemplified <coughs> in his pamphlet, The Lessons of October, is to address how apparent re revolutionary opportunities were not only being squandered, i.e. Hungary, Bulgaria, uh, Italy, Britain with the general strike in 1926, and in China with the revolution of 1927. <coughs> but how these appear to be, a gr how, how there appears to be a growing inability to learn from these defeats. The Bolshevik success in 1917 for Trotsky was importantly based on learning from the defeats of 1848 and 1905. Rosa Luxemburg had a peculiar <coughs> phrase for this, that the struggle for socialism progressed through defeats. It is during this period that we first begin to see the growth of what later became Stalinism, best exemplified in the Declaration of Socialism in one country, which dressed up defeats as victory. Up, to 1920, up <coughs> until 1928, Trotsky had simply been an upstanding Marxist of the Second International, the Bolshevik Party, and then the Third International. In the 1920s, he opposed Stalinism from within the Communist Party in the left opposition. After, after his expulsion from Russia in 1928, his position with, <coughs> with, <coughs> excuse me, his position with regard to the common turn developed, and in 1933, he observed how Stalinism and Na Nazism had conditioned each other, and the liquidation of Marxism through the top popular front, which lacked an <coughs> adequate Marxist theory. <clears throat> the establishment of the Fourth International in 1938 represents this perspective. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Rather than attempting to win over the leadership of the Third International Parties, Trotsky now sought to build socialist parties anew, including through trying to split the remaining socialist parties of the Second International many of which still had mass support from workers. <coughs> Trots Trotsky's critique of Stalinism reached its most developed form in his 1937 essay, Stalinism and Bolshevism, which begins, reactionary epochs like ours not only dis disintegrate and weaken the working class and isolate its vanguard, but also lower the general ideological level of the movement and throw political thinking back to stages lo long since passed through. In these condi <coughs> conditions, the task of the vanguard is, above all, not to let, let itself be carried along by the backward flow. It must swim against the current. If an unfavorable relation of forces prevents it from holding political positions it has won, it must at least retain its ideological positions, <coughs> because in them is expressed the dearly paid experience of the past. Fools will consider this policy sectarian. Actually, it is the only means of preparing for a new, tremendous surge forward with the coming historical tide. <coughs> the key point here is the question of maintaining ideological positions with, while retreating from political ones. This is a problem that has haunted Trotsky's followers in the Fourth International and its various splits ever since. <coughs> Trotsky does not consider Stalinism to be an in inevitable de development of Bolshevism and the political party, as some left communists had argued, but rather that Stalinism is the antithesis 
of Bolshevism. <coughs> Referring to such theories of an inevitable development from Bolshevism to Stalinism, Trotsky wrote, The flaw in this reasoning begins in the tacit identification of Bolshevism, October Revolution, and Soviet Union. The historical process of the, <coughs> the struggle of hostile forces is replaced by the evolution of Bolshevism in a vacuum. Bolshevism, however, is only a political tendency, closely fused with the working class, but not identical with it. Bolshevism, in any case, <coughs> never identified itself either with the October Revolution or with the Soviet state that issued from it. Bolshevism considered itself as one of the factors in, of history, its conscious factor, a very important but not decisive one. <coughs> and then, <coughs> farther on. Only a few days ago, an American writer, Liston N. Oak, has participated in the, who has participated in the Spanish Revolution, wrote, The Stalinists are in fact today the foremost revisionists of Marx and Lenin. Bernstein did not dare go half as far as Stalin in revising Marx. This is absolutely true. We must add only that Bernstein actually felt certain theoretical needs. He tried conscientiously to establish a correspondence between the reformist practices of social democracy and its program. The Stalinist bureaucracy, however, not only had nothing in common with Marxism, but was in general foreign to any doctrine or system whatsoever. <coughs> <coughs> this is the attempt to address Stalinism dialectically, and, and therefore to attempt to <coughs> underscore how, how Stalinism is the accommodation to defeat in positively identifying with the October Revolution the workers and the Soviet Union, and so on. Trotsky, however, however, following Lenin, tried to maintain the critical non-identity of party, class, Soviet, and state. For Trotsky, the abandonment of this non-identity is the abandonment of the critical recognition of Marxism at the revolutions of 1848, <coughs> thus casting into doubt whether the 19th century had passed in vain. This is what <coughs> Trotsky means by <coughs> Excuse me. This is what Trotsky means by Bolshevism as the conscious factor, that is, historical consciousness. <coughs> Similarly to Lenin in his pamphlet, Left Wing Communism and Infantile Disorder, Trotsky warned against fetishizing the Soviets as a political form. <coughs> this is what he means when he says that Bolshevism did not develop in a vacuum. <coughs> <coughs> This recalls his argument in the Lessons of October that there was a danger of collapsing political differences <coughs> in the development of the Bolsheviks in its history <coughs> as an accommodation to the present. <coughs> Rather, Trotsky thought that internal contradictions of the political movement for socialism were important for registering the non-linear development of the struggle for socialism. Following Luxembourg and Lenin in the revisionist dispute, Trotsky thought that a split within Marxism <coughs> indicated the possibility for revolution. Disavowing the, <coughs> the, historical development of Bolshe Bol the historical development of Bolshevism would abandon that insight. The third point to highlight then is how Trotsky had considered Stalinism not only comparable to revisionism, in fact, but in fact falling below it. Stalinism is, oh, Stalinism is opportunism. <coughs> is, <coughs> is opportunist in its abandonment of the dialectic and accommodation to the inertia of the status quo, abandoning the historical consciousness and horizons of Marxism, which, as Trotsky put it, <coughs> found its highest historical expression in Bolshevism. This is not the same as a moralistic, still Tr Trotsky. <coughs> Sorry, <not> Trotsky. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, anyway. This is not the same as, as a moralistic anti-Stalinism or one based on, on a theory of a theory of Stalin's personal dictatorship. Opposition to Stalinism on the left can still assume the features of Stalinism, for example, in economic determinism. <coughs> as, as Cliff Slaughter, who is a member of the Socialist Labour League, <coughs> a, a tradition from which the AWL descends in some way, wrote in his 1916 pamphlet, What is Revolutionary Leadership? There are many socialists 
who are naturally repelled by the bureaucratic distortion of Soviet society and of the Stalinist parties, as well as, well as by the shameful record of social democracy and the fail to escape from the distorted theory and methods of Stalinism. Retaining that fundamental characteristic of Stalinism, loss of confidence in the ability of the working class of <coughs> the advanced capitalist countries to conquer power, they dress up their loss of nerve with theoretical ideas, <coughs> which have been current in the anti-Bolshevik sections of the left since the October Revolution and even before. <coughs> and then later in the same essay, he writes, without the study of the social roots of Stalinism, rather than the horrified turning of one's back on it, there could be no renewal of Marxism. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> After Trotsky's death in 1940 and the tragedy and destruction of the Second World War, the Fourth International had to immediately reconsider many of its suppositions. Trotsky had written that only the founders of the Fourth International, who have made their own the whole tradition of Marx and Lenin, take a serious attitude towards theory. However, this <coughs> However, this perspective began to disintegrate in the aftermath of the Second World War. Had the 19th century passed in vain, Trotsky was the, mass, uh, Trotsky was the last man standing from the great lost tradition of international socialism, the last man standing from the 19th century. <coughs> Trotsky himself recognized that as history stagnates, so does thought. In the greatly diminished horizons of the administered state of fascism, Stalinism, and the bourgeois welfare state, and then in the missed opportunities of the 60s new left. Trotskyism disintegrated into one, into, on the one hand, zombie sects with a handful of members claiming to be the core <coughs> of, a, of a future Leninist party, and on the other, movement building and protest groups on the fringes of capitalist parties like the Democrats and the Labour, or Labour. <coughs> In an early issue of the Platypus Review, Richard Rubin wrote, the melancholic orthodoxy of today's Trotskyism reminds us of the thwarted lover who instead of successfully mourning and overcoming his loss will e endlessly talk to his friends about all the <coughs> excuse me all the ways that she did him wrong until he finds that his friends don't want to talk to him anymore <coughs> thus we are faced with the problem of, of discontinuity we in Platypus are our, see ourselves as suffering from the a necessary discontinuity from the, from the tradition of revolutionary Marxism. It is indeed unfortunate that the left is dead. It is indeed unfortunate that we are in no place to build mass workers' movements and to overthrow capitalism. We are victims of this, of this discontinuity. <coughs> but we have to, <coughs> excuse me, but we have to re recognize it as a fact and, and as a starting point. We are not in, as others claim to be, the true party of the Russian Revolution, because to claim that today is to do a disservice to the original vision of the Russian Revolution. To, pre to be prepared to fight the good fight forever is to be resigned to never winning it. To not be willing to, to re okay. recognize <coughs> that the left is dead is to have died with it. As re researcher, researchers, critics, and historians of, of the dead left, which we now put to rest, with a deep feeling of gratitude. We hope to be ready to educate the future politics of emancipation. A century on <coughs> from the failure of the German Revolution, we, we might ask the question, has the 20th century passed in vain? <coughs> this live stream because I love my phone.